Haiti is in a state of crisis. They just experienced another catastrophic earthquake. This time, it was 7.2 magnitude. The last earthquake that they experienced was in 2010, and many Haitians still haven't fully recovered from that disaster. Many had to flee the country. But on top of that, they are experiencing political instability and political violence due to the assassination of their president. So many people have either lost everything or they no longer feel safe in Haiti because of all of the violence, and thousands have chosen to flee the country. And many have come to the United States. They arrived in Mexico, and then they crossed the border, and there's about 14 to 15,000 currently camped under a bridge in a Texan border town. And what they're hoping for is to be able to make their case for asylum. Many have been here for days, and many are starving, and they're hoping for a chance at a new life. But before I get into the specifics here, I just want to give you a broad sense of what's happening. This is an on the ground report that gives us some additional context. But keep in mind, by the time you see this video, the numbers and details may have already changed. But nonetheless, here's a general overview of basically what's happening on the ground right now. I can tell you this is a very dynamic situation that has changed drastically over the last 48 hours. If you ask Border Patrol, they will tell you that uh, some of this may stem back to that 2010 earthquake in Haiti, which sent many people immigrating to South America. And then following the 2016 Rio Olympics, where many of those folks worked, they then started that long process north. But as what's happening right here, right now, the only border crossing into Mexico in Del Rio remains closed down, and it is a 24-7 mission. We're just on the side of the border fence, and we are seeing agency after agency agency drive through this gate manned by the National Guard. You see Border Patrol trucks, you see customs vehicles here. This is just part of the massive response we've seen from authorities here uh, in response to a group that essentially tripled in size in just a matter of days. Go back to last Wednesday, the group beneath that bridge, about 5,000 strong. At last check over the weekend, 15,000 people were essentially calling the shade of this border bridge home. The goal right now, trying to process every single one of those people, some of those bust to nearby processing facilities that are not overwhelmed, others being uh, flown on what they're calling lateral flights uh, to do that same thing. And then we've already confirmed over the weekend that those first deportation flights have already begun, three of which took off from San Antonio to Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Uh, but there are still so many people, that whole group that flew back, about 300 staff, we still have at least 10,000 Haitian migrants uh, beneath this bridge. We were granted exclusive access yesterday, had a chance to speak to one woman. She said she had been under that bridge for eight days, had barely eaten a thing. We had seen food and water handouts there set up by the Border Patrol. But, I mean, the supplies cannot come fast enough right now to try to take care of these people. Just minutes before we spoke to you, there was an ambulance here outside that a woman from a Border Patrol vehicle was transferred into and taken away. And unfortunately, that has been an all too common sight here. So this is very obviously a huge humanitarian crisis. These people are starving. These people are desperate. And all they want is to be able to make their case for asylum. So, of course, you know, the very compassionate Biden administration is greeting them with a welcoming message and is telling them, listen, we're trying to process your cases as quickly as possible. That's that's what's happening. Right. And so the Biden administration is currently trying to direct resources to this area to feed and process all of these asylum seekers. Right. No, of course not. That's not what's happening. In fact, the message is the opposite. And I think you probably predicted that and you probably knew, knew that I was being facetious because the DHS secretary sent a very clear message. Get out. We don't want you here. If you come to the United States illegally, you will be returned. Your journey will not succeed and you will be endangering your life and your family's lives. This administration is committed to developing safe, orderly and humane pathways for migration but this is not the way to do it okay so nobody else should come got it but that doesn't change the fact that 14 to 15,000 people are already here and they're currently under a bridge and i would argue that the overwhelming majority have a very compelling case for why they should be granted asylum so what do you do what, what do you do to mitigate their suffering well of course if you're the united states you do the most american thing ever you uh 
launch a mass expulsion campaign to send them all back to Haiti as quickly as possible. And according to AP, this could be one of America's swiftest large-scale expulsions of migrants or refugees in decades. Yeah. So how do you how do you do this if you aren't going to allow them to make their case or not allow most of them to make their case for asylum? How do you do something like this? Like how do you pull this off in a humane way? And the answer is you don't. You herd these people into planes back to Haiti as if they're animals and if need be you literally whip them. That's what we're doing that's quite literally what's what's taking place in the rio grande currently u.s border patrol agents on horses are trying to herd haitians drive them out back into mexico or onto planes and they're literally physically abusing them with whips vice news's emily green describes the scene border patrol officers on horseback swinging whips in the faces of haitians families with toddlers scrambling across the rio grande back into mexico to avoid being deported haitian parents crying as they faced the prospect of being deported home to a social and political crisis that seems to see no end those were among the scenes in the town of del rio texas over the weekend as the u.s government took a hardline stance against thousands of newly arrived haitian migrants seeking protection the situation is becoming a public relations and humanitarian challenge for U.S. President Joe Biden's administration as images of Border Patrol agents on horseback screaming at and chasing desperate Haitians reverberated across the internet. Quote, this is why your country's shit, because you use your women for this, one officer on horseback shouted at a group of Haitian women who were crossing the Rio Grande with bags of food, showed one report by Al Jazeera. The situation along the southwest Texas border at the entrance to Del Rio is becoming a bigger problem by the day for President Biden, who is trying to assert control over the international line while fulfilling his promise to take a more humanitarian approach to immigration. Well, you've already failed miserably on that regard, Joe. So, I mean, I don't understand why you even maintain this facade that you're more compassionate than your predecessor. When we see scenes of Haitian migrants who are desperately seeking asylum getting whipped by Border Patrol agents on your watch, I mean, why even pretend? You've already gone full mask off, so stop pretending as if you care. The truth is, the United States government does not care. We don't even care about our own people. We're letting thousands of people every single year die due to a lack of basic access to health care, due to uh, housing. So, of course, we don't care about these immigrants. In fact, we don't even acknowledge that they're human beings. We treat them like animals, quite literally. So it's just truly disgusting. And, and to make matters worse, as Biden tries to claim or present himself as a more compassionate like, and moral president, he's literally using a rule created by the Trump administration to expel immigrants in a very quick manner. So as Julia Conley of Common Dreams explains, the Biden administration launched the deportations of the migrants under Title 42, a section of the Public Health Safety Act, which former President Donald Trump invoked during the pandemic to quickly expel asylum seekers from the country. President Joe Biden has drawn international condemnation for continuing the policy. Yeah, and I just want to remind you that this is taking place under a Democratic administration. Joe Biden's administration is literally using using a Trump era rule to expel these migrants as quickly as possible. And you can't expel a large group of people in a compassionate and humane way if you want to do it quickly. I mean, it's not a humanitarian thing to do, period. If they're literally seeking asylum, I think that they should be able to make their case. But to do this rapidly, of course, there's going to be human rights abuses. And so a lot of you are going to see the images, which are absolutely disturbing, of Haitian migrants being whipped by U.S. Border Patrol agents on horses, and that's gross. But even if they weren't whipped by Border Patrol agents or harassed and assaulted by them, they're still being treated like criminals. So, so rather than being treated as if they're seeking asylum, you know, we should treat asylum seekers with respect and dignity and, and respond to their needs. But that's not happening. They're reporting that they're being handcuffed and some of them are being lied to. So they're saying, hey, get on this plane. We'll take you to Florida. And rather than going to Florida in hopes that their case will be processed at a facility there, they're getting deported back to Haiti. And Haiti is calling on a humanitarian moratorium on these deportations because they're saying, listen, we're in crisis mode currently. We can't take in thousands of deportees when we're dealing with the crisis from the assassination of our president with the earthquake, what are we supposed to do with thousands of people who are coming back to this country perhaps worse off than they were when they left? 
There's no homes for them. Like, what, what do you want us to do? So rather than doing the humane thing and at least temporarily halting these deportations, the United States government at this point is uh, not doing that. And they're making Haiti's crisis even worse. I mean, it's not like we don't have the resources to assist them here. This isn't that many people in the grand scheme of things at a minimum perhaps at least try to hear out their claims for asylum because I think that most of them, if not all of them, will be compelling. But I mean, if you're wondering, what do we do? When it comes to these sort uh, sorts of crises, there's never an easy answer. By now, with how old our country is, with how many times this has happened and will continue to happen in the, in the future, especially with anthropogenic climate change, you know, we should have some sort of a system in place, but whenever this happens, whenever we see a large influx of migrants, we immediately freak out. And if there's a Republican in power, then that Republican president is going to be as cruel as possible. And if there is a Democratic administration in power when this happens, that administration is also going to be as cruel as possible, worrying that, you know, if he's not actually uh, harsh enough at expelling these immigrants, that, you know, uh, the insane xenophobic Republicans are going to freak out and claim that he's too weak. It's just, it's so disgusting. So, you know, when it comes to the question of what do we do, uh, why don't we just start by like not treating them literally like animals and whipping them? That's like a really, really basic thing to start with. Maybe don't whip them. Maybe acknowledge that like us, they're human beings with desires, with fears, with ambitions, and maybe not whipping them is a really great place to start. I don't know, maybe maybe I'm crazy, right? Now, thankfully, lawmakers have spoken out. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, they all have condemned the whipping here because these are scenes that we shouldn't be seeing from a so-called compassionate administration. We shouldn't be seeing this, but we are, and that isn't necessarily that surprising because the only thing really that has changed with regard to our stance on immigration is the rhetoric. Joe Biden doesn't go out of his way to fearmonger about immigrants, but he still treats them like garbage. He still doesn't acknowledge their basic humanity, doesn't care at all, is totally unmoved by their claims of asylum, which when you see all of the things happening in Haiti currently, why can't we hear out their cases? So it's just, you know, over and over again, we see this, and this situation is only going to continue to get worse as we start seeing the issue of climate refugees pop up. So, um, you know, if you're disturbed by seeing these images, then that's good. Don't try to run away from these images. Acknowledge that this is taking place under a democratic administration and use this anger that you're feeling when you see these images to fight for a better world, for fight to fight for actually a humane response to migrants, especially ones that are seeking asylum, which is a human right, by the way.